Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to another video. As you can see, it's a cold, clear night in Sirencester, and I'm in the garden shooting the Sol Nebula. Now, the Sol Nebula is a emission nebula in the constellation Cassiopeia, and it has a huge amount of hydrogen gas, so I'm going to be shooting using the narrowband um, filters. It is also right next door to the Heart Nebula, and I've shot the Heart Nebula before. Um, I'll put the image up on screen now, and I really, really like this image, so it's one of my favourite images that I've taken to date. Um, so I thought I'd give the Sol Nebula a go as it's right next door to the heart and um, then I'd have both the heart and the Sol. Um, I was hoping to, well, ideally I'd like, like to get one image with both both the heart and the Sol Nebula in, um, but I don't think, well I definitely can't fit that in frame, even with the smaller telescope at 430mm. To do that I think you need to be shooting about 150 120mm, so um, I don't have anything that can shoot that wide at the moment. I might look into getting an adapter to fit a camera lens to my astro camera because at the moment I can only attach telescopes um, which means I could put the, the 100 to 400 millimeter lens on and I can shoot much wider and I should be able to get the heart and the soul nebula in one image then but at the moment I have to make do of having them in separate images. So I've already set up as you can see the uh, everything set up behind me so all I need to do now is polar align wait for it to get fully dark and then start collecting some data but now I just thought I'd take you quickly through the setup that I'm using for tonight's image. As you can hear it's quite windy tonight so that's where the this short refractor comes into to play as well so it's really handy having the smaller telescope on the mount um, meaning it doesn't get um, affected by the wind quite as much. So this is the William Optics Z 73 telescope it's a 430 millimeter focal length so i can just about fit the sole nebula in in the frame i have the the zwo asi 1600 mm so the mono camera attached to the telescope with the filter wheel and i'm going to be shooting with the ha03 and s2 filters tonight on top i've got my guide set up so i've got the asi air um, I have around the other side, I have a 120 mini guide to camera and a 30 millimeter guide scope on the top. So that's the setup I'm using. It's all on top of the, the Skywatch NEQ6 mount and I'm just about to wait for it to get dark. There's a few clouds in the sky still, but they should pass in the next hour or so. And then I'll start collecting some data. So I was just about to polar align and I get this screen here, firmware update needed for the ASI Air Pro. So I have to wait for that to download now before I can go any further. Okay so polar aligned, pretty much everything's done now outside, um, scope's all ready to go. I can now go in, the joys of the EAF and the uh, ASI Air Pro can now go in and control everything from the uh, comfort of my sofa so no need to stay outside in the cold anymore go in, put my feet up and uh, start collecting the data so it's been a few weeks since I collected the data on the Sol Nebula and I just wanted to show you what I was talking about when I was um, discussing the focal length and framing these targets. So as you can see both of these targets are really close together in the night sky and this is just a telescope simulator that I use. And what I've done is I've plugged in all of my details. So this is the sensor size for my camera, the ASI 1600mm. And this is the focal length of my telescope, so 400 millimeters focal length. And as you can see, it gives you an approximation of what you can fit in frame. So this is the rough framing that I got when I shot the Heart Nebula and this was the rough framing that I got when I shot the Sol Nebula. But if I wanted to get both of them in a single image, then I've worked out that I need to be shooting at about 180 millimeters. So around 160 to 200 millimeters, but 180 seems to be pretty good. And then I'd be able to get both of them in the same image. So what I'm hoping to do or what I might look into is trying to get an adapter so I can fit my telescope, I'm sorry, my camera lens onto my Astro camera and shoot with the narrowband filters. Um, haven't looked into it yet, but that might be a good option. Okay, so I also wanted to talk about a number of mistakes I made when shooting the Sol Nebula. Now the first was not checking the Meridian Flip. So this is the, um, the results from my O3 data. 
Now, luckily, my HA and my um, S2 happened before the ASI Air did the Meridian flip, but the O3 was collected after the Meridian flip, and normally the ASI Air recenters the target really well. But as you can see from this image, it did not recenter the the Sol Nebula at all. Um, this is what it should look like, or how it should be framed, and this is what. I got so I woke up the next day looked at my data and realized that none of the O3 data was usable now I should have checked it but this actually happened while I was asleep so um, that meant I had to reshoot all of the O3 data so that was the first mistake I made now after another night of collecting data on this target which I didn't want to spend so much time on um, I then came to edit the image and I realized that I actually missed focus on the S2 data as well. So that was the second big mistake that I made. Um, so here you can see the sulfur data, this is stacked, and here you can see the O3 data. And if you compare the stars on the O3 to the stars on the sulfur, you'll clearly see that I just missed focus. So really I should collect the sulfur again. Um, but I'm onto new targets at the moment. I've got my camera and my filters set up with the bigger scope and we don't have many clear nights. So what I tried to do is instead of shooting this data again, I wanted to try and rescue it. Now I did that um, by running a star reduction on this data here. And I did the EZ or EZ, as I should say, star reduction. If you don't have the EZ processing suite plugged into your um, Pix Insight, I would definitely recommend it. Even if it's just for star reduction, it's absolutely brilliant. So I ran that twice on the sulfur data before I actually combined it to the Hubble palette. And I think I just about got away with it. I just about salvaged it. So as you can see here, this is what it looked like before. So the stars are a little bit bloated, a little bit out of focus. I just managed to reduce them in size a little bit, um, which meant when I combined it for the final image, it looked acceptable. It's still not great. It's still not the best image. And when you look closely, you can see there's a few issues with it, but I think it's just about passable here. Yeah. So anyway, I will show you the final image now. Thank you very much for all your support. Thank you for your likes and your comments and subscribing to the channel. Hope you like this image. Let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you in the next one.